bro, I'm just, if we do not define our own narratives, Europeans will find someone who looks like us and get them to argue our case badly. I'll say it again. If we do not define our own narratives by hook or by crook, even if it means jumping onto YouTube to do it, Europeans will find someone else that looks like us and get them to argue their rationale, their racist rationale badly. <sighs> Who is this chalky-lipped motherfucker? And why is he speaking for us? How did he get there? Never seen him in the hood? Thank you for no, the beginning. Uh, we're going to start with a news story. This is front page headlines today. Boris Johnson yesterday accused the BBC of wetness, right? Wetness were his words. This is over last night of the proms. You may be aware of this, uh, the whole row about this. He, Yeah, the whole row about the last night of the proms. I've just done a story on Adele highlighting the fact that it's bullshit. The mainstream media is dragging black people into bullshit narratives that are a load of crap just so they can go, oh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right. So, so basically, we're, we're in a long-term strategy now of dumbing down anything black. Not only dumbing down, relegating anything black, any black conversational talking point. We're relegating it to nonsensical, irrelevant, put-to-the-side activity. I told you that's what's going on. Here's another story proving my point, because... Let's face it, who's talking about last night of the proms? Are you talking about last night of the proms? I'm not talking about last night of the proms. Yeah, we know the lyrics to Land and Hope and Glory. Uh, yeah, we know the lyrics to Royal Britannia. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not really that fast. Yeah, they talk about Britain never, never shall be slaves. Yeah, they're talking about the time when they used to own people. Let them sing that. It's good that we, re we were reminded that they used to own people. If they want to be proud about that, fine. Let them go, yeah. Have you noticed every time England sings Royal Britannia, their football team loses? They're going to be winning 3 0. As soon as they start going, Royal Britannia! Oh, it's 3 1, no, it's 3 2, and it's 3 3, and this is the equalizer. It's all to play for here. That's what usually happens. So I'm not really that fast, because, uh, you know, those songs usually G up the opposition. If you're the right opposition. He expressed disbelief at the BBC's decision to perform. Rule Britannia, Who cares? land of hope and glory, Who cares? without lyrics. This Who was cares? last night of the prom. And for a start, no black person cared about this. Once again, just like the Adele story with the, 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 uh, not China bumps, with the, with the, the knots, yeah, the Bantu knots. I was about to say the Wu-Tang Clan. With the Bantu knots, yeah. A bullshit story. We don't care. So, but, this story conflates the last two things that I've been talking about. One, which is bullshit narratives, and two, imitation black people. What do you mean, imitation black people? I mean, the people that are descended from the transatlantic slave trade being imitated, uh, i.e. I, imitate, no, sorry, being represented by those not from the lineage of the transatlantic slave trade. Let me carry on. If you've never watched last night of the proms, I reckon they're going to have a big audience this year. Here is what the Prime Minister had to say. I think it's time we stopped our cringing embarrassment about... The bumbling buffoon. ...about our history, about our traditions, and about our culture. And we stopped this general bout of self-recrimination. Bout <laughs> self-recrimination! You, you mean... You mean... Guilt at owning people and selling them. Is that what we're talking about? That's what needs to be. Okay, that's what he's saying, okay. And wetness. Well, let's get reaction to uh, all of that. We're joined by political campaigner uh, Femi Ulu Wulai. Sorry, sorry, oh, sorry, 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 what, what, what's your name? What's your name again? You know what, I'm going to get a lot of stick from my, from my Nigerian friends probably. But look, you know, I love you, right? Give me a break. I, I've got to explore this nuance because it's being used and I know what's going on. Other people know what's going on. No one's addressing it. I haven't seen it being addressed. So I'm addressing it. Who is this chalky-lipped motherfucker talking rep rep 
So, okay, if we're talking about the black experience. Are we talking about the black experience from the from the Windrush? We're talking Windrush because when they say black, you're talking about Windrush. That's all they mean when English people say black people. They're talking about the descendants of the Windrush generation. Those are the black people. I don't recall anyone from the Windrush generation having the name Otowole. Otobanjo. Oto, whatever. It, oh, please. You're going to get me going. And we stop this general bout of self-recrimination and wetness. Well, let's get reaction to uh, all of that. We're joined by political campaigner uh, Femi Oluwulai and Nigel Farage. Oluwulai. Okay. Is that Jamaican? No. Is that Caribbean? No. Um, because we're talking about a subject matter here that pertains to Britain's colonial past, the owning of people and so forth. Therefore, I would have thought you would have had someone from that lineage to represent the mindset of the people at the time. But no, you got... Ol I can't even remember what his name is. Raj on this. Uh, Femi, first of all, what Femi. do you think of what the Prime Minister had to say on this subject? Uh, well, he's essentially saying that, given that the main reason why people are upset about this song, uh, a very specific group of people, namely the BBC for some reason, uh, is the issue that it says uh, Britain rules... Okay, well, he started off okay. Yeah, that's right. The only people uh, worried about this are the BBC. I don't know any black people worried about this. You better represent, go. Well, the waves and never ever shall be slaves. He's talking about the slave trade and he's saying we shouldn't be embarrassed about that. It's essentially him just trying to provoke a culture war to distract from... Trying to provoke a culture war to distract. Um... Um... Okay, okay, no, okay, I'll ride with that reasoning for the moment. I'd go a little bit further than that, but okay, let's ride with your reasoning for a second. It's lame, it's weak, but let's go with it. Everything he's done, his own fact that he, he himself said that the problem in Africa is not that we were once in charge, but that we're not in charge anymore. He's just trying to provoke people. He knows that it plays well to his base. He knows that he can use this to say, they're coming after your culture and stir up people. Well. Yeah, to an extent, he's absolutely correct. This whole issue is a dog whistle. Uh, it's a racist dog whistle issue. How dare they attack our patriotic songs? Nobody's attacking anything. Once again, it's another straw man argument where black people are being dragged into an arguing point that we have no interest in just so that it can be demeaned, derided, and brushed to side as nonsensical conversation. But who's participating in that? Who's participating in the nonsensical conversation? Who's not calling out for what it is directly to the person's face? Chalky-lipped motherfucker right here. Uh, but this idea that the BBC is somehow leading the march for racial equality when it took them two weeks to apologize for a news presenter using the N-word uh, incidentally, um, when y y do you not remember when the, the BBC did that? That was literally straight after the Wiley thing. It was almost like a tit for tat. Wiley said something about um, you know those people who shall not be mentioned that um, own the Diamond District, and uh, a lot of people uh, got got you know got out of their chair because you're not meant to you're not meant to mention the people that that run things. And in their own surreptitious way, um, the BBC went, huh, huh, "We're going to use the." n-word legally so it was tit for tat i saw it as tit for tat this guy doesn't see it as tit for tat because he's not going to be on wiley you see he's not going to feel wiley i feel wiley i know where wiley's coming from and the continuation of what he's noticed this guy doesn't know that on a live news yeah, broadcast that's not what i asked you what i asked you is uh what do you think of what he's had to say about rule britannia you're telling and, and excuse me, um, uh, I, I, w I wouldn't be spoken to like that. I'd probably say that I, the, the mic, the, my headphones are working perfectly well. I, I heard what you actually said. Now, I'll carry on. That's how I would, uh, you don't allow yourself to be spoken to, but chalky lips, chalky lips. A live news yeah, broadcast. That's not what I asked you. What I asked you is, uh, what do you think? Of the BBC is some said that the problem in Africa is not that ever shall be slaves. What do you make of what the Prime Minister had to say on this subject? What do you make of what the Prime Minister had to say to this subject? Now, a Eamon Holmes is being an asshole here. Eamon Holmes is going right, full on right wing here. But um, he's, he's able to get away with it. I could destroy Eamon Holmes. 
Uh, Give well, me a point. Essentially saying that, given that the main reason people, why people are upset about this song, uh, a very specific group of people, namely the BBC for some reason, uh, is the issue that it says uh, Britain r ruled the waves and never ever shall be slaves. He's talking about the slave trade, and he's saying we shouldn't be embarrassed about that. It's essentially him just trying to provoke a culture war to distract from everything he's done, his own. It's him being full on racist. It's him. It's the prime minister of a country. Sanitizing genocidal rape, murder and torture. But it didn't happen to your people, did it? Did it? Chalky lips. Didn't happen to your people. I know that from your surname. On the fact that he, he himself said that the problem in Africa is not that we were once in charge, but that we're not in charge anymore. He's just trying to provoke people. He knows that it plays well to his base. He knows that he can use this to say they're coming after your culture and stir up people. Uh, but this idea that the BBC is somehow leading the march for racial equality when it took them two weeks to apologize for a news presenter using the N-word on a live news yeah, broadcast. That's not what I asked you. What I asked you is, uh, what do you think of what he's had to say about rural Britannia? You're telling me why you think he said it, but from your point of view, and I think the audience at home would just like to know, what is your particular problem with the lyrics of rural Britannia? Right, so, so uh, combative journalism one-on-one. -on -one. Let's go back and analyze that, okay? Because he was asked a question, okay? And I think he was asked a question specifically just so that Eamon Holmes could say, oh, right. because if you, when, in, in order to answer a question, one has to expound on a question and give reasonings, which I thought he did. Um, think of what the Prime Minister had to say on this subject. What do you make on what the Prime Minister had to say? I mean, so it's your, it's your personal opinion. What's your personal opinion? Joel Farage on this. Uh, Femi, first of all, what do you make of what the Prime Minister had to say? I think Femi did answer that. He did answer on... on he on he answered subject. that question. Uh, well, he's essentially saying that, given that the main reason people, people are upset about this Answering song, the question. Uh, but see, the thing is, there's no the nuts with this reason. guy. There's no uh, balls. The issue that it says uh, Britain ruled the waves and never ever shall be slaves. He's talking about the slave trade, and he's saying we shouldn't be embarrassed about that. It's essentially him just trying to provoke a culture war. To so, in, in essence, he did answer the question. He did, he did give the interviewer his opinion on what he felt the words of the Prime Minister conveyed. Distract from everything he's done. This is a perfect opportunity for you to belittle Holmes. I, I'm sorry, um, I, I thought I just answered that in rather great detail. His own fact that he, he himself said that the problem in Africa is not that we were once in charge, but that we're not in charge anymore. He's just trying to provoke people. He knows that it plays well to his base. He knows that he can use this to say they're coming after your culture and stir up people. Uh, but this idea that the BBC is somehow leading the march for racial equality when it took them two weeks to apologize for a news presenter using the n-word on a live news yeah, broadcast that's not what i asked you what i asked you is uh, what do you think of what he's had to say about rural britannia you're telling me why you think he said it but from your point of view and i think the audience at home would just like sorry Amy, but you answered your question but this guy's a bit slow to know what is your particular problem with the lyrics of rural britannia now, here comes the straw man argument. Remember, I've been saying black people have been drawn into stupid arguments, argument, argument points. This guy didn't come with any objection to the lyrics of Rule Britannia, nor did any other black person. But why would you... So, I, you know, from off, you've, you've got to be like, what are you, sorry, what are you talking about? Uh, why are you asking me for that? I'm not the one who implemented a ban on the lyrics. That was done by the BBC. Why would you be asking me? He's creating a storm. He's allowing himself to be the the c cardboard cutout straw man, so they can beat the crap out of him. And he's a willing volunteer. Well, to be honest, I, I don't watch the proms. Most people um, don't really care about that song because we ne we almost never sing it. But as for that song specifically, um, it was now when he says we, he's, who is he talking about? Family, family. When he says we, who's he talking about? Now, we don't sing Land of Hope and Glory. We don't We don't sing Land of Hope and Glory. We don't sing Rule Britannia. No, we don't. But who's he talking to? Who's he representing when he speaks? Listen. 
written at the time that the UK was actively engaged in the slave trade, selling, selling people across the, across the waves, selling black slaves. So they were singing about how we, we ourselves will never be slaves. If I were to use a, an analogy, can you imagine if a rapist, and this is not an exaggeration because slavery involved a lot of rape, if a rapist wrote a song about how he himself had never been raped, would you sing that song? No, because you know that that song would be that song would be bragging about that rapist's position at the top of the food chain. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's that's a pretty decent analogy. But then we also have the actual horrors of slavery as our analogy already. So owning a human being, doing being able to do whatever you want with a human being, the song is an ode to that period, is an ode to that recollection. But I mean, at the end of the day, um, for me as a Caribbean, um, let them sing that song. Let them sing that song. Let people know that they sing that song. I don't have any objection to it. Britain never, never shall be saved. Well, okay. Right now. <laughs> yeah. You're good now. Right? So, you know, let them sing that song. I mean, uh, it's stuff that we need to remember. Um, I've got enough balls, yeah, to let them get on with it. They're going to be who they are. Let them get on with it. I'm not going to run around going, no, you can't sing that. Because that reminds us of slavery. But that our constitution is stronger than that. Who's he representing? Okay, would let, never let, let's that. get reaction from Nigel Farage now uh, on Why? all of this. Um, is 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 Femi's offence justified? Oh my God! So you're going to ask a racist white man? See, and the film, watch Femi just sit there and allow that to be tabled. Here is a white man asking another white man if he thinks that this black man's outrage is justified. Here is a white man asking another white man if he thinks that this black man's anger is justified. What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with letting you, what's wrong with this guy letting that question be tabled? Excuse me, uh, excuse me, are you asking someone else to validate how I feel? That's what I'd be asking. Who is this guy? This guy, for this Femi, whatever his surname is, first came to my attention um, in the midst of the Jeremy Corbyn campaign, and I was all, Corbyn, let's go Corbyn. They interviewed this guy, and he was the one that said Jeremy Corbyn's policies were insane. I, I was like, who is this fool? Who are you? All it takes is a black man to say something like that for a load of other liberal white people to go, oh, well, the black man's... Oh, oh, oh. Femi, I'll work out what your name is at the end, but it's not a slave name. This is, uh, I think there's the one point where, actually, there's one time in history, actually, now, where having a slave name helps us distinguish who we actually are. And who's representing us. First things first, I'm very pleased Boris Johnson said what he did. He's been rather silent for a long time. Well, you would do. You're UKIP. Of course, you don't want the legacy of slavery... Uh, uh, negatively affecting the world's perception of you no you want it to be forgotten about that's not going to happen that's so not going to happen that is so not going to happen i'm uh, and the bbc have got this hopelessly wrong the overwhelming majority of people listen the bbc did this on purpose to stoke a reaction out of the British public. Nobody asked for this, but remember, we have to make black people the bad guys. Remember? Look at the last video I just did. We have to make black, black, black people the bad guys. We'll just be walking down the road going, look at that stuff over there, and they'll go, oh, here's the story involving you. We're like, what? Yeah, well, no, it's not involving us. Well, yes, Femi Adewalaja Balaj 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 says, sorry, I don't know, I, mate, I don't know who that is. I'm rocking with a with a pennant and a Baptiste and and the Weeks and 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 you know give me some other Caribbean surnames, yeah that's who I'm rolling with, yeah. Who I, I do all of what? Sorry, I mean let me carry on. Live this country, you care about this. <sighs> want the proms? Let me just say that one thing. Hold on a second. Big up my West African people. You know what? What flag am I using? What flag am I using? Shut up! What flag am I using? 
dickhead. Alright? Before you like, oh, he hates on African. What flag am I using? I just like to pick apart the nuances. That's not, why is he represent, I, I'll deal with all of these guys a lot better than this. I'll talk about the horror and the and, and, and the negativity of slavery and the feelings that it evokes every time that song is sung. Um, I could Not that I care, but if I chose to care, I could do a lot better than Mr. Femi here. To be as they've always been. As for the song itself, well, the song Rule Britannia is about the fight for liberty. Uh, it's when Rule Britannia was written, black people were enslaved. Please say that. When Rule Britannia was written, black people were enslaved. So whose liberty are we talking about? That's the first thing I would say. Let's carry on. It's about this country, you know, ever since Viking invasions and King Alfred. Um, and of course, pretty relevant when you think that 80 years ago, 80 years ago today, we were engaged in the Battle of Britain, which if we hadn't won, the whole of Europe would have been Nazi for decades and decades. So we have always been about liberty. And that actually might have been a better outcome for Africa, to tell you the truth. But I make this point to Femi. Rather than constantly attacking everything this country has ever stood for. I don't think he attacked anything at all. Remember, we're only here because the BBC have decided not to play the lyrics of Rule Britannia. No black person's asked for it. But then, remember, Femi's just decided to put his face on TV so he could be a straw man for the racists to kick the shit out of black people. I hope Can he enjoys his time. That it's a very good thing that Britain did rule the waves because for well 50 years in the 1800s, it was the British Navy that got rid of the slave trade. Right, so poacher turned gamekeeper, right? Uh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Poacher turned gamekeeper, that's all that was. Poacher turned gamekeeper. The British were instrumental in, uh, in, in industrializing the slave trade. So they only ran around stopping the slave trade in order to minimize the development of the competition. Anyone? <laughs> Please. When all the other countries wanted to continue it, we are the one country in the Western world that fought hard at massive cost in money and lives. Mm -hmm. The one country in the Western world because they wanted to prevent all the other European powers from using slavery to get an equal economic, well, to get economic parity with, with the UK rid of the slave trade and why don't we celebrate that fact? Femi, what do, you, what do you make of that that it was actually why don't we celebrate the people that industrialized slavery stopping slavery that is the stupidity of what's been proposed let's see how Femi re let respond Femi the, the navy that helped stop the slave trade a lot of people are, are coming back with that argument mm. by the way that's not an argument uh, to be honest, I don't. Well, I don't. I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on this argument that we needed to end slavery in order to end slavery. And I'm going to point out the fact that, as as Nigel Farage just said, he's saying that you just glossed over that a little bit too easily. That that just went to the crux of the hypocrisy of everything that they just said. But hey, we're right. coming after a culture. This is this is the, what they're doing. Um, people marched in the streets uh, about Black Lives Matter. Not one of the people was marching about rural Britannia. They wanted to. Uh, in, in introduce blind CVs because right now Oxford research shows that people from with ethnic sounding names have to send between 70 and 90 yes, percent so, of so applications why, so to get a job offer. Is that not a that point? That is not what we're, that yeah. is not the issue here. But Femi, is right. that, is that the point? Remember, this is, remember, Femi's representing the limp dick Black Lives Matter spearhead, floppy head. Point is that People are saying, why are we wasting time trying to rewrite history? The points you make are very valid. There are so many bigger issues now moving forward, particularly yes. fighting... Yes, exactly. That's why you've created a straw man argument to make black issues look nonsensical. Racism and getting people's understanding and awareness. And here we are spending mm. all this time talking about something that, that was in history that we can't rewrite. Now they're actually blaming Femi for an article for a storm in a teacup of their creation he was only there to be the straw man and he's not even a very good straw man because he's not even really kicking back we can't change we can move forward and change it 
you so, make a very good point that we shouldn't be spending all this time talking about it. But every time I mention the things we should be talking about, I keep getting shut down. No, uh, yes, as I mentioned, you were booked on this show today to talk about your objections to rule mm -hmm. Britannia and land of hope and glory. Now, if you don't have objections to them, let us know. Would you allow them still to play out, or do you think they should? See, I tell straw man argument. Straw man argument. You you were booked on this show because you opposed it. <coughs> I would have seen that as a straw man argument and I probably wouldn't have done that because they're just looking for someone to get the shit out but this guy wants to get his face everywhere. Should be banned. I was booked on this show to talk about the reasons why this song is an issue and the reason why this song is an issue especially in the context we're all living through. Actually, it's not an issue. But he wants some airtime because he's the face of black people. He is representing you family that's your representative right there, Femi, uh, whatever his name is. In terms of Black Lives Matter, it's because it's a distraction. Now, I'm going to explain to you why it's Bing. a distraction. It is a distraction Bing. because these people want to distract from the fact that Boris Johnson, with his majority of MPs, could, you, could do things to uh, address systemic racism. He could introduce blind CVs. Instead, <coughs> they, want, they want, Boris Johnson is saying we shouldn't be embarrassed about slavery. Nigel Farage spends his, his weekends in a boat in the channel shouting asylum seekers. They're, they're, they want to distract you from the things that they've done. Boris Johnson caused the, the highest excess death rate in all of Europe. Nigel Farage is the reason why at the end of October, we're not only going to be facing an end of furlough, uh, but we're also uh, going to be facing uh, uh, the end of the Brexit negotiations. Let's hear Nigel. Yeah. It's very interesting, isn't it, that people like Femi, who were opposed to the result of the referendum, wanted it to be overturned, are the same people... Yeah, that's right. Hold on a second. Because Femi was pro-Europe. Femi was pro-Europe. Now, if you're a person of colour, you got no business being pro-Europe. I mean, you got no business being Brexit either because all the racists are on that side. But you got no business being pro-Europe because Europe just wants to get stronger again so it can go back into Africa. Read Article 42, Lisbon Treaty, raw resources and securing of raw resources. Where are the raw res world's raw resources found? They're not in Europe. But anyway, that's, an, that's another story for another time. Listen to this. People who want to denigrate this country, not just its history, but its present as well. I told you, straw man argument. No one was denigrating anything. Nobody said anything negative. But this guy wants airtime. Well, uh, and now look, if you're at home getting angry at what Fem is saying, please don't. He represents a tiny extremist minority. The vast majority, Lick those huge lips. majority of Britons are tolerant, open, decent people. We are. Uh, I'm sat here making YouTube videos because I was racially harassed out of a teaching job. Are without doubt the most tolerant country in the whole of Europe. Uh, we want racial equality and. It's not the most tolerant country in the whole of Europe. Nah. I mean, yeah, you've got the right wing in France, but you've also got a lot of beautiful things in France. You've got the right wing in Amsterdam, but you've got a lot of beautiful things in Amsterdam. You've got more beautiful things with black people in France and Amsterdam. Oh, no, that's a lie. You've got more beautiful things in the UK. But the dirt, the dirt is so much. You've got more dirt. Let's say there's beautiful things over there, but less dirt. Okay, less scummy underbelly. In fairness in our society. What we don't want is a campaign that masquerades under Black Lives Matters that effectively is a Marxist campaign to bring down this country, to end capitalism, worst of all, their stated aim to defund the police force. And that is why... I want to move on. We've, talk, we've talked yeah. about... Sorry. Hold on a second. Defund the police, that's an American thing because the American police are the ones that have been militarised. We don't have... Uh, OK, we've got SO19, but the, of, for the whole, of, um, the whole, the police walking up and down the road, they're not militarised like they are in America, so... Uh, you know, he's he's conflating the American uh, Black Lives Matter issues with with the UK. Sorry to interrupt you, Femi. We've talked. I would I would have made that point about Rule Britannia. I want to, to uh, move on to Land of Hope and Glory because it's both songs that the BBC have said Land will not be sung glory. at the proms. Oh um, and so once again, they're asking a black man his opinion of why the BBC have chosen to do something. Right? It's the BBC that chose to do anything. There's no one here campaigning for it. He's even there saying he's not campaigning for it. But he doesn't know how to extricate himself from this situation that he's got himself into. Now they're just throwing stuff at him.
Dame Vera Lynn's rendition of Land and Hope of Glory. Dame Vera Lynn. They've put him up against the sacred cow. Oh dear, this is, what a setup. Let's see how he deals with that. Has gone uh, to the top of the UK iTunes chart today. Well, let's just hear some of that and then we will talk about the lyrics and what you both think of them. Nigel Farage, would you in any way accept? So even on the, let's hear some of that thing from the negative lyrics that we were told that the BBC aren't going to do. But we're going to play anyway, in front of you. And, and you know they went out of their way to play that. But anyway, I don't care. We don't care. Once again, like the Bantu knots, we don't care. Um, these sort of renditions belong to a different era and have no relevance to... Do you know what this makes me think of? South Africa's rally song, Kill the Boar. Yeah? Clearly, Kill the Boar is now okay to sing. Eh? Right? If we're going to go on the same logic, the same rationale, South Africans, yeah, kill the boar. Someone, someone ring Malima, yeah, kill the, because according to Eamon Holmes, yeah, and Nigel Farage, kill the boar is now 100% acceptable for you to sing. It's part of your culture. Don't be embarrassed and don't shrink from your cultural legacy. Kill the boar. Young black people like like Femi and in today's modern world. Skits young black people like Femi in today's modern world. Remember I tell you, uh, imposter, well not, he's black, he is black. He's, but okay, is he representing the second generation of Africans? Is he representing the second generation of Africans? No, someone's gonna say, no, no, he's representing all black people, yeah? He's representing all the young black people. Really, Where, where's the last time you saw him in the manor? No, Pisses I mean, Land me of Hope and Glory is slightly different, of course, to Prince Kanye. Land of Hope and Glory is talking about a time when we were the biggest, strongest country in the world and we had this great big empire. But have a think about that. In all the history of humankind, never has a country with an empire managed to form, post the empire, an association such as we have in the Commonwealth. And again, that's the remarkable thing about the British Empire. Associate, so he's, he's still got the rose-tainted spectacles that every relationship with every former uh territory on the empire is good he believes that everybody you know we used to be all colonial rooms but now we're just friends we play each other cricket that you know that, that's whatever you think about that every country in europe was trying to build their own and we still have this fantastic relationship with jamaica and india and australia and canada hang on a second did he just say Jamaica? Not the place that you're deporting people back to. Not the place where you're deporting the Windrush people back to. Is that the good relationship? Oh, lordy lord. Is, aren't we like a couple of months from few, few half a year from, from Windrush? What good relationship? You're deporting Jamaicans. And it's some Please come back with that, Femi. Something I think that should be celebrated, and that's why Land of Hope and Glory can be sung, not just by white British people, but by people all over the world. And you know what? It is. Because last night at the proms is something people all over the world watch. They love it. They enjoy it. It's uniquely British. It's uplifting. It's patriotic. And it celebrates our place, not just in history. I've seen last night at the proms. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. I, I get the rabble-rousing, um, I was going to say xenophobic. I, was, I meant jingoistic, um, uh, you know, flag waving, rule Britannia, and all that stuff like that. And you know, I, I, I 100 percent get it. I've been, I've been privy to uh, this since I was eight, nine year, years old. When it was, they had all the hats and all massive flags, and it always used to end on rule Britannia. And it's one of the most patriotic things you've ever seen, actually. So I mean, uh, you know, let English people have their English thing. Again, I don't give a shit. Let them do their thing, but don't come and stop us from doing our thing. See, that's where it, that's where it all falls apart. Because they'll go, land of hope and glory. And you'll have that big massive finale. But if we want to go off and do our thing, no, they get butt hurt. Yeah, you want to come and stop it and interfere it and sabotage it. With this remarkable relationship we have with all of our former colonies, which we should be very proud of.
Femi, we, we've done a poll with our viewers. Femi, you should be going in on this, Femi. You should be going in. But he doesn't know. See, there you go. <laughs> Nigel Farage has just made humongous faux pas mentioning Jamaica, right, in the midst of a Windrush scandal. Femi's not responding to that with any outrage. You know why? Because it doesn't affect him. It don't touch him. He's culturally apart from that. I would be taking this man to task for saying that. After just, like, what's special? Your, your relationship is so special that when you find the Jamaicans, you give them a, flight, a free flight back home. That's how special the relationship is. Look at the guy standing there like a chalky-lipped fool. This morning saying, should singing Rule Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory be banned? 91% uh, of them at the moment say no. So, um... <laughs> Can you explain to our viewers <laughs> what it is? <laughs> no, uh, this was always going to come. 91% <laughs> so, Can you explain? Here comes the ridicule. Here comes the belittling of any black intellectual contribution to the conversation. Can you not hear it in the voice? <laughs> 91% <laughs> So, so... <laughs> We, we've done a poll with our viewers this morning saying, should singing Rule Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory be banned? 91% uh, of them at the moment say no. So um, can you explain to our viewers what it is about the lyrics of Land of Hope and Glory? Because people might not think about actually what they're singing. They're just enjoying singing it. What is it that, that you object to and you think that should be left behind? Again, what is it that you object to that should be... I, I, so, mate... Like, it's the BBC that did this. You, this talking head is just, he just wants a bit of airtime. But he, there's, an, the average Jamaican would have done a better job. An uneducated Trinidadian would have done a better job. And an illiterate Montserratian would have done a better job. I've met all three. So again, um, if we're talking about this song specifically, uh, the, the line about how our, bind, uh, our bounds are wider set still, the idea of increasing our territory, uh, the idea of the UK as an empire constantly increasing its territory uh, might not sit so well with you if you live in Northern Ireland. Yeah, but, but they're not at the moment. Ireland and you're on the nationalist side of things and believe that, na that Northern Ireland should be belong to Ireland as a united Ireland. Right, yeah, that was some time ago. That's kind of the point. Um, but again... This, this narrative is being driven by the BBC, the same BBC that took two weeks to, to apologize for using the N-word in the live news broadcast. The idea that this represents the fight for, for racial equality yeah. is laughable. Uh, Ferry, yeah, they just, I just want to say, you've just brought up Northern Ireland, my pet subject Ooh. here. Uh, the Irish national anthem, which is called the Soldier's Song. Let me just read you some words from the Irish national anthem. Go on then, Eamon. Uh, some have come from a land beyond the waves, sworn yes. to be free. Yes. No more our ancient sire land yes. shall shelter the despot or the slave. Do you no more shall our land shelter the despot, evil rulers or slaves. There will be no subjugation. That's good. Those are good lyrics for Ireland. I just heard that. I took it in. I comprehended it. And I gave you a response. Eamon Holmes is being stupid. Because one, Britain never, never shall be slaves, yeah, slaves. And then his national anthem, no, no, none of you will ever be slaves, right? Which is a much better thing, but he's, but he's being a devil. Listen. Do you have an issue with the word slave used in the Irish national anthem? Why should you? Ireland's not going to be, not going to shelter the despot or the slave. That means it's a nice land. Why would we have any issue if we just comprehended the lyrics? But once again, he thinks that this is just simplistic knee-jerk slave. <laughs> slave! <laughs> right? Because that is the extent at which they have belittled Femi, whatchamacallit here. And look at him. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you have a problem with the term slave there? My God. This is so badly done. Um, no, no, it says, it says no longer shall our, our, our country shelter the despot or the slave. Yeah, yeah. And, and you need to explain the, the context of, of what they meant by that. But there's a problem with me though. I, I'm wrong. I'm wrong.
I'm asking you, do you have an explanation of the context? Because every time the... Well, I forgot an explanation of the context because I just heard the lyrics. But Eamon is on such a... He's, he's, he's taking it down to, to, to infantile, childlike level. Every time you hear the word slave, you get offended. Right, because that is how much that is the that is the low consider low intellectual dexterity that they are imbuing Femi with here. The S word seems to be used. The S Do you word. You have an issue with it? Well, uh, it, it's it's an issue within the context of rule Britannia on the basis that we were bragging about how we were in a position of enslaving other countries whilst are not whilst not ourselves being enslaved. Um, you I need could to sit here and we could go and through the French national anthem, the Italian national anthem. Uh, the Portuguese national anthem. Uh, All irrelevant. I mean, the French national anthem, the, the German and the Portuguese, none of those are in English. So what relevance does that have to us? I mean, I suppose if we have to go out of our way to translate those into English, what relevance does that have with us? What emotions does that kick off with us? Do you know what it is? None. None. But here comes Eamon Holmes. This is all straw man, straw man, straw man. Um, the Mexican uh, national anthem. Do you think we should have an issue with national anthems in general, Nigel Farage? A very stupid question. A very stupid question. But he's asked, he's taking it down to that level of stupidity so that Nigel Farage can seem like a, an intellectual powerhouse. No, look, we are all of us, all of us in our countries forged by our history. And there are parts, Kill the boar. parts of our history that we adore. And there are parts of our history that we're slightly ashamed of. And that is the same for every country in the world. I mean, goodness me, I tell you what, read out the words in English of the Marseillais, the French national anthem. I mean, it's real blood and gut stuff. I mean, what? why? What relevance does that have to this conversation and the emotive effects of the words used in something like Rule Britannia? It has none. But then he straw man, straw man, straw man, and he is just happy to be on TV. Look, the fact is, whatever you look back at in British history, we have been the country above all that has fought for liberty, that has fought for freedom, that has fought for religious tolerance, that has fought against slavery and made the rest of the world end it. We should be not all of it, but let's be proud of our culture, our history, get him past, and let's stop these extremists like Femi. And trying to tear it down. Femi's not an extremist. Femi is controlled opposition. Yeah? Femi's not an extremist. He's controlled opposition. Look, why is he smiling? This is the part. I would be angry right now. My blood is boiling. I'm not even there. My blood is boiling. What are you smiling about? This is where I would be going in. Femi, a BBC spokesman has said, for the avoidance of any doubt, these songs will be sung next year. So even the BBC, it says, once again, they're smoking you out. They're, they're, you know, we're, gonna, we're not going not gonna to sing the lyrics. Waiting for any idiot to come out and go, yeah, yeah, don't sing the lyrics, yeah. Because we don't care. But now that someone can say, no, oh, look, look at these Negroes. They don't want you to sing your, oh, no, no, oh, outrageous, look at these silly Negroes. Don't worry. Next year, everything's going to go back to normal. So all of this, no, 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 it's not going to make any difference. Played. Like the tiniest violin in the world. Um, and we look forward to their traditional return next year. So it's only this year. How do you feel about that? Yeah, how do you feel about that, straw man? How do you feel about that, you idiot? <laughs> Representing something so stupid. Uh, well, like I said, this is the BBC being the BBC. The idea that they're leading the charge, that this was some lasting change they wanted to make and not simply a... You know, see, the thing is... I, I, right now, I'd be like, see, see, why are you guys talking to me? Why are you going to the BBC? Because the BBC, is it. I mean, I agree with some things, but I'm not the one, no one's asked for this. It's the BBC that's done it. Why do you keep coming to me as though I was the one who prompted the BBC to make the decision? Do you see how they're approaching it? You can almost argue that this was an attempt, an, an attempt to inspire people like Nigel Farage to get on their... Oh, 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 how come you got to that at the end of the interview? family if we don't define the narrative mainstream will find someone else that looks like us and define our narrative badly or they will argue 
the offending narratives badly. That's what you have right here. If we do not challenge the narrative, individuals like that will lose spectacularly on our behalf on national TV. Femi, you're a loser. How do you not how do you not beat that? How do you not beat Nigel Farage? How do you not beat Eamon Holmes? How do you not get a fire in your belly from Nigel Farage saying that England has very good links with Jamaica after deporting the Windrush generation? See, even the way I even the point see, I can't even say that without a little bit of emotion in me. Because that's my people. Is that your people, Femi? It's not. Why are you talking on our behalf? Who put you there? Who imbued you? Why are you? But anyway, at the end of the day, there are other people more articulate than myself who can deal with that, but the BBC is going to run. Have you not noticed that when it's time for the BBC to find a black person to say something, they hang around Brixton Station, or they might hang around Seven Sisters, and they'll look and they'll find the most inarticulate, uh, uneducated black man walking by. Uno must stick together, yeah? Uno must love each other and put the knife down, yeah? Stop killing each other, blood. Have you not noticed that they go out of their way to find those individuals? And if they don't find those individuals, because the real ones are, are scary, then they find Femi's. And he will smile in front of Nigel Farage. Nigel Farage peddles the lie about... Britain's ex-colonial past still being on a friendly basis. <laughs> we're, we're really good friends with Jamaica. And I, I like to, and look at him there smiling. Because it's funny. Because it doesn't affect his heart in the same way. He's a placebo. After your culture, look at these extremists when it wasn't us who asked for this. It Nobody wasn't. on the Black Lives Matter was talking about the proms. We See, now everything black is Black Lives Matter. Everything black is Black Lives Matter. Yeah, everything's black is black lives matter, led by this guy. Even in the How many straight men are there in at the head of Black Lives Matter? Someone tell me. None? None. None. No straight men at the head of Black Lives Matter when globally we are seeing the genocidal killing of black men by a militarized police force of race soldiers. We were asking for real systemic, real change to the systemic racism in the country. Uh, we have asked uh, you watching at home, should singing Rural Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory be banned? Well, I was going to say yes. 10% of you say yes. That means 90% Nigel Farage have said no. Yeah, good common sense. And, you know, Straw man are argument proud easily country, beaten. Proud of our culture. Uh, and I think, you know, I'm not worried about Femi, as I say. He represents you don't need to be worried about Femi. What I'm worried Femi. about is the fact that all of us are forced to pay a license fee to a BBC who are happy uh, and, frankly, uh, right throughout all the trauma we've been through in the last few months, happy to pander to this minority view. And uh, I, I frankly don't think the BBC is fit for purpose. And I One, once again, the BBC has not pandered to anyone. If anything, the BBC is being strategic. The BBC is playing chess. OK, the BBC have moved a couple of moves ahead. All right, they've moved two moves ahead. Femi, with his knee-jerk reaction, and then, hey, hey, somewhere offended by these lyrics. Oh, me come on. Me no see long though. Oh, me come on. Right? That's what's going on here, right? I suspect that what this little row over Royal Britannia will do is lead so to a much bigger, broader debate about do we need the BBC? Do we all need to be paying for this? in the 21st century. Well, that's, a, that's another debate. Um, thank you very much, both of you, for your, for your thoughts on that. Femi Olawole and Nigel Farage, thank you. Femi Olawole and Nigel Farage. Once again, family, if we do not define our narrative of second and third generation Caribbeans in this country, Femi and Wale will, or whatever, I forgot his name, Femi will, he won't respond appropriately. He won't get the fire in his belly when he hears something outrageous as Nigel Farage has just uttered. Because he's there for airtime. Who's he representing? What manner? Whose name are you coming in, Femi? Who's your mentor? Who's your elder? Bernie Grant got me into teaching. I don't know, he didn't get me into teaching. He inspired me to go into teaching. Bernie Grant. 
former MP for Tottenham, Bernie Grant, when I was a little kid. Okay, that's whose spirit I come in. <sighs> keep your eyes out open. Keep your eyes out. Op keep your eyes open, people, because the f the placebos are out there. Fifty minutes. Oh my gosh! What am I changing?